ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فلما بلغ معه السعي قال يا بني اني ارى في المنام اني اذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى قال يا ابت فعل ما تؤمر ستجدني ان شاء الله من الصابرين فلما اسلم وتله للجبين وناديناه ايا ابراهيم قد صدقت الرؤيا إنا كذلك نجز المحسنين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مروا أولادكم بالصلاة وهم أبناء سبع أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين And you're respected Brothers, elders, and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses the believers, and in their lifetime, at every moment, there's a chance and opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every era and time frame this man, this insan, this believer is in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has an excuse for him to get closer to him. If we look a month or two back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with the month of Ramadan. Leaving aside the month of Ramadan, Daily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an opportunity to this insan, to this believer, to this Muslim to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day. That as soon as he wakes up, or for those that are fortunate, an hour or two after they wake up, they have been commanded to perform Salatul Fajr. And it is possible that this insan, this Muslim, this believer might commit sins after performing Salatul Fajr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the ability to perform Salatul Dhuhr. And after Salatul Dhuhr, he might commit other sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the opportunity to turn towards him during Salat al-Asr. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentions in the hadith, reported in the Sahihain, the two famous books of hadith, Bukhari and Muslim, that al-Jumu'ah ila al-Jumu'ah, wa Ramadan ila Ramadan, that one Jumu'ah to the next, one Salah to the next Salah, one Ramadan to the next Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes out the sins that were committed in between them. Five times a day this believer has a chance to, return, to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he comes on the day of Jumu'ah, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like he mentioned in the hadith I just quoted, sins will be forgiven at that time as well. Every Ramadan is an opportunity once again for the slave to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his sins are forgiven. So the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making an effort on his body, on his soul, the scholar that was with us previously, Fadi Sahib explained in detail the importance of Salah and how a person will be able to abstain from sins due to the Salah. 
So a person gets into the habit of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that even in your wealth, there is an act of worship which is incumbent upon you, and that is zakah. That's why in many places, in tons of places in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corroborates salah with zakah. And there's the establishment of salah, and that is the effort of the body. And then there's the paying of zakah, and that is one's dealing with his wealth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bought from the believers their lives, their bodies, and their wealth in lieu of Jannah. Both Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala includes in the transaction for Jannah. When the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sacrificing so much, then the month of Ramadan comes and the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fasting throughout the day and he is staying, he is staying away from food and drink. And this is the quality from the qualities from the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of food and drink. In Allah huwa al-razzaq wa al-quwwat al-mateen. Ma uridu minhum min rizq wa ma uridu an yuta'imun. In Surah Al-Dhariyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I do not want their sustenance. No, neither do I want them to feed me. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sustainer. But the slave of Allah, for one month, he is practicing of fasting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his traits, from his qualities, that he stays away from food and stays away from drink. Tashabbu bi sifatillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, the scholars mention that this slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing something similar to the quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what takes place is the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to meet his Rabb. He wants to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for the mu'min, for the believers, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجْ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ Ibrahim is commanded that call out to the people of the world to come together to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to circulate the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so a person wants to, he's longing to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent from places and not, is not in need of places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for the believers for their contentment, his house Ka'batul Mubarakah in Makkatul Mukarramah where the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will flock and they will, they will circulate the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if they are going to meet their Lord. Two pieces of cloth that will be worn by the king if he goes for hajj and by a slave if he also goes for hajj. They will stand together in salah and a person will not be able to recognize the king from the slave. Because those same two pieces of cloth or similar will be the ones that will go with this person in his grave. If he's a king or if he is a slave. And it is easy to understand from the poetry of Maj Layla and Majnoon. We've probably heard of many of their stories in his famous by Sheikh Rumi as well, 
where he quotes a lot of their stories. Majnoon was incredibly in love with this Layla. So he used to walk the streets where Layla would reside and he would sing this poem. He would say this few couplets to himself. He says, I walk the streets of Layla and I kiss this wall and I kiss that wall. He was insane, he was mad. It is not the love of these houses and these walls that have penetrated my heart. It is the love of Layla that has penetrated my heart. Similarly, the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will go for hajj. He will be making tawaf of the house of Allah. But the command is, you will not be facing the Kaaba when you will be going around it. Your side will be facing the Kaaba because Kaaba is not the place, is not the being that is to be worshipped. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the life of a human being. This is the life of insan. Many of us might be thinking, what's the topic? I still haven't gotten there yet. Speaking about Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid the foundations of Hajj on the sacrifices of Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family. The sacrifices that he made, the struggles that he went through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants each and every single person until the day of judgment to remember these sacrifices. And there are great numerous lessons that can be derived from the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But today, because it is very relevant, it is very important, I want to focus on the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam with his son. And this is the topic of discussion today. Parenting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran that we don't worship anyone besides Him and we obey the parents. They are corroborated in the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in many places. In a very unique way, when Luqman alayhi salam is speaking to his son in Surah Al-Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the dialogue. Ya bunayya la tushrik billah, inna shirka la dhulmun azim. That O son, do not ascribe any partners unto Allah, because this is a great wrong. And a few verses later, he continues speaking to his son. So on the top of the page, Ya bunayya la tushrik billah, inna shirka la dhulmun azim. And then the dialogue stops. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings a few verses and then again the dialogue of Luqman with his son continues. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that time where he breaks off the discussion of Luqman with his son, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ that we have advised and commanded man regarding his parents. Mufassirin rahimahumullah mentioning the exegesis of this verse. They are questioning why does Luqman speak to his son and all of a sudden Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically takes the mic and says Speaking as a first person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We have commanded insan regarding his parents. And then after that verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues the discussion of Luqman with his son, Ya Bunaya aqimi salata wa umur bil ma'rufuna anil munkar. What is the reason for this? Why wasn't that whole discussion mentioned together? The Mufassireen 
The scholars of the interpretation of the Quran, they mention that when Luqman mentioned to his son that, Oh my son, do not ascribe any partners unto Allah. Worship one Allah. He fulfilled his responsibility of commanding his son. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will now bring the verses about respecting and obeying the parents. Because he fulfilled the responsibility regarding me. Now I will tell mankind regarding parents. So we hear time and again, the respect that children must be giving to the parents. But what about vice versa? What about loving and taking care of the children as our deen and sharia expect, expects us to do so? In the time of Rasulullah it was such 